couple of years ago, I used to use my 130 here as an experimental vehicle for trying things out because it had drum brakes on the back and I was never too sort of happy with them because they were always adjusted and the pedal was on the floor. And that was never really good. So, I wanted disc brakes in the back. And the only way I could fit them, I put the actual Discovery 1 rear disc brake axle in the back of the 110. Now obviously the diff's not quite the same, the ratio was the same, the widths and all the fittings were the same. And I drove it around like that for a year and I thought, yeah, okay, brakes are, disc brakes, they're good. So what I did was I put the diff Defender axle back in with the drum brakes, stripped it all out and replaced everything to make it into a disc brake conversion, as in a 300 TDI. Now you guys in Europe, you have loads of access to uh, parts to make disc brake conversions. You know, you could even take the whole diff out of a, a 300 TDI and just bolt it in and there you go. But unfortunately, we're not lucky like that. So we have to do it from scratch. And it's not as easy or as cheap as you would think it would be. For example, I'm going to do a picture here, and you can see, well, I'm going to put two pictures up, and I'm going to show you all the parts that you need, except on one drawing for the uh, hub, I've circled part number 19 to show you that that's the part you don't need, and you can keep from your old axle, but I got it wrong, so just ignore that. So here's, here's the pictures. I'm not sure if this is going to come out very well, but the parts you need, you need the axle shaft, you need the hub, you need the seal, the gasket, the bolts that hold it on, the bearings are different, the hub's different, um, you can keep the circlip, but the only bits really you can keep are all the hub nuts here and the locking washers and the seals, you can use those again. But really, just for the axle assembly, you need that. Now, the reason why you have to change it is because the stub's shorter. And that makes the axle shaft different as well. But the flange is exactly the same on a drum brake or a disc brake axle. That's fine. No problems there. So, uh, the hubs, actually, I got an aftermarket one. And it was really, really good. It was well machined. But I put Timkin bearings in, a genuine Timkin bearing set. And that worked out very, very well. So next we'll look at the other picture of the disc and the caliper. So just to talk you through what you need, apart from the other bits I've just shown you, you need this special little bracket. Now these now used, these used to be genuine Land Rover and they were quite expensive. But there's aftermarket ones now sold by all the major uh, part suppliers. Uh, and they've come down considerably in price. Um, New brake caliper, they weren't worth, you know, trying to find used ones was a pain. Um, disco ones didn't fit for some reason. Um, just get rebuilt calipers, they're, they're not all that expensive. We mentioned once before about squealing brakes and we put the Ferrodo brake set in. Never a problem, not, not a squeak, not a whisper comes out of these things. Obviously you need a, a disc, back shield, well, kind of you know, optional really. If you do put the back, you know, the uh, splash shield in at the back, you need the bracket number 13 to complement it. But some people do and some people don't. I mean, it's a funny thing because if you're off-roading, you can get an awful lot of do dust and dirt and stones and things behind the shield, which makes it all grinding together. So that's the, generally the bits you need. So you can imagine it's all adding up. It's adding up and adding up and adding up. And what's most importantly, shipping of all these things. If we have to ship these across to... To Canada, it's very, very heavy and very, very expensive. You may have noticed here I've fitted a heavy-duty uh, drive flange arrangement. Um, these were, uh, I think this was a brick part one. It was, qu it was quite good, actually. I've never had a problem with it. You can see how the rest of the discs rusted out, but this is kept quite kind of nice. The reason you have to 
well, you don't have to do this. You can put the original dry flange on, but they are very thin flanges, and there isn't enough contact area on the spline. And when they, what they did with the 300 TDI, they put an oil seal in the axle at the back and filled the hubs with grease. That meant that the spline didn't get any lubrication on it at all, like the old 200 TDIs and the, one, the, the Land Rovers earlier. And it caused these splines and hubs to, hub flanges to fail at a catastrophic rate because they were always chattering. It was really, really bad. So whenever we got a 300 TDI in that was standard, we always used to change the, change the shafts and the hub flanges as standard. And that got rid of a lot of clonking because when you drive... The, the, all the drive is exaggerated so by doing this uh, we can keep some lubrication quite nicely in that hub some people have taken the oil seal out at the back and gone back to the old idea of um, having the axle oil lubricate the bearings which isn't a bad idea um, but like I say I fill it with um, good quality grease and it's never a problem I do have a problem however with this axle and now I remember why I took it off there is some backlash in the axle, you see? Is it acceptable? I don't know. I don't really notice it because it's my, you know, you know, it's just my running around truck. But one day we'll probably take the diff out and we'll try and find out the source of that because I think it just needs a little bit of an adjustment. But it's not a job for today. The only reason I'm doing this today is because I've got the vehicle on the lift when I did the transmission brake and I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to put um, a, drum, a disc brake conversion. Uh, I'm quite happy with it because I'm not always change, you know, adjusting the, um, the pedal, uh, you know, like the pedal used to go down with the drum brakes. <clears throat> with this it's okay, but I also fitted the Disco 2 or Disco 2 or Disco 1 brake booster or servo, if you like, to the uh, pedal tower. I should maybe do a video of that because that was a really good conversion. I, I really like that one. It really makes it stop. So when this car is driving along now and you hit the brakes, the car dips down and it dips down at an angle like, you know, like parallel to the ground. Instead of going tipping up, it really clinches down. So it's great for towing and things like that. Um, yeah, so quite happy with it. Would have been happier if it was cheaper, but as I say, over here, it, you know, thousands of miles away from, from parts, it was uh, the only option was to just to get it new and do it right. Now I have seen people using bits of disco disco one parts and stuff like this, and I've seen some shocking things done on on websites where people have just put one locking hub nut behind this cover instead of the locking locking nut a lock washer and another nut, you tighten them together and crimp them over. You'll, you'll probably understand what I'm, I'm saying there, but because these are a little di bit different length, they only end up putting one nut on. Well, that's kind of bad. The only way you could use one nut is if you put a spacer between the bearings like they did on the TD5. The TD5 has a completely different setup to this. So if you're going to use, you know, you've got an old axle that's busted or something like this, the diff's gone, and you want to re-salvage the brakes, just make sure you get everything. Just take off the drive flange at the back and pull it all off, and then you can put it onto whatever axle, because the splines are all the same. All right, so don't worry about that. It's all, they're all those, all those Salisbury's are just about the same, except when you start to get into uh, pumas and things like this, and that was a different ball game altogether. They used a different axle. So I hope you liked that. If you did like it, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to ask any questions, if, you know, like sometimes I'm t it's funny talking to myself. So <clears throat> ask a question and I'll see if I can do a little video on it. Okay? Talk to you later.